So our next speaker is Renee Yankee. She comes to us from the St. Joseph, or I'm sorry, from Whitby Health. We're, we're going up the state line here. Um, Whitby Health, um, she's a nurse practitioner. She's in charge of their oncology program. And Renee is here to talk to us about a really intriguing and valuable, I think, for us as oncology nursing. We put so much into our care and cancer patients. And no matter how long we've been in nursing, there's a lot of energy and passion put into it. So Renee is here to talk to us about preventing burnout um, and compassion fatigue while caring for our cancer patients. And before I turn the podium over to Renee, I want to make sure that everyone got her handout. Yes? Did any no's? Okay, I think we're set. So, and make sure you get the chocolate. about what people are experiencing and we want to make it better. Um, 
the good compassion fatigue. It's actually made up of three different three different parts. And anybody who answered that question in the beginning got it right. I had forgotten I put those questions in there, so it's great. Um, the the thing it's three prongs. It's first of all there is that component of burnout. There and there is also the secondary um, traumatic stress syndrome, and then also looking at compassion satisfaction. And you have a tool in your handout that we'll talk a little bit later that can help identify some of that. But if your compassion fatigue, this is that emotional withdrawal and experience, and it happens for those who take care of sick or traumatized people. And as a result, the bad stuff I'm returning to are some of those bad symptoms. It's that fatigue, that isolation, withdrawal, where you know what? That work that used to mean something to you, it's now a task, and it's a chore. Okay, I've got four meds to hang before I can go home today. And you don't, and it, you lose that caring and the compassion and making sure that those symptoms are being controlled. Um, and then the sensitivity it, that's related to the compassion, it makes nurses a little bit more vulnerable to this. So what's the difference with, between burnout and compassion fatigue? If you think about it, burnout is much more externally focused. It's, um, it's that stress of doing those referrals and getting the authorizations for the insurance, um, making sure that you have adequate staffing, um, making sure that your treatment choices are going to fit in with the what their insurance is going to cover, whether it's going to fit in with their the patient's lifestyles, um, and these are all things. But those are those physical stressors that make your life more painful. Um, and as a result, oftentimes you have that emotional and physical exhaustion, and you start getting a little bit cynical about, you know, government, insurance, healthcare. <laughs> um, <laughs> the difference is that with compassion fatigue, it also it's it also is related to that emotional burden that you're taking on about that patient's experience, and that's the difference. Does that make sense? Now the secondary traumatic stress disorder, this is rather interesting because what it is, it's actually the stress related to you taking care of those people that are going through the trauma, okay? So it's kind of that virtual or that vicarious experience. You're not the one experiencing that trauma, but you're, you have the experience of taking care of people who are experiencing that trauma and that suffering. Um, and it can be triggered by one event as well as it can be built up over time. And a lot of times, we usually we see it built up over time. Um, and they can respond differently to uh, the different stressors. Um, it often, it usually does happen up all of a sudden, it'll just be a sudden trigger and you, um, it takes you back and, you, and you're stressed with that. Compassion satisfaction. Any thoughts? It's kind of that question that you answer, why do you do this work? And we were talking about this a little bit at lunch. It's like, why do we take this? Why do we do this work? Why do we take care of patients and families? Um, it's because we have that compassion. It's because we have that, it brings us pleasure. Anybody, so anybody have anything to offer? Why do they do what they do? What pleasure does it give? What, where do you get your satisfaction? When you, when you see relief on somebody's, on, on a patient's face. Excellent. Any other experience? Any other thoughts? I like it when they know who you are the minute you pick up the phone. They recognize. that it's 
it's not just nurses that have this problem with comp you know, compassion fatigue. When I was doing a lot of my research and digging into things, guess what? Veterinarians are one of the top ones that suffer from compassion fatigue. And um, <laughs> isn't that interesting? And it's and it's the same way with um, the veterinarians, the um, firefighters, policemen, uh, EMS. Um, I really had to uh, uh, because I'm sure that the nurse here that's in the that works in the ED also has her share of of these experiences. So when we're doing this um, and we know that these symptoms of compassion fatigue all look very similar to things maybe we've seen. And so I'd have to ask a question. How many of us in, in this room have had, um, have wondered whether or not they have some degree of 